<laughs> but it's a balloonist breakfast. Now, have you hold on to those cups for just a minute while I tell my story, and we'll start off with that by going back in time. Back into France in 1783, which is when and where ballooning was invented. What else was invented in 1783? Champagne. Anyone? No? Champagne actually come a little after that. No. Jack Daniels. <laughs> For sure. Now, back in France in 1783, ballooning, of course, was invented by two brothers. It's always two brothers with the aviation mm -hmm. community, right? Yes. Two heads are better than one. Me, I think it's the big brother pushing the little brother to go first. You always need a test dummy, right? I have a big sister. I know what that's all about. She fed me dog food. <laughs> that's probably why I'm like a foot taller than she is. <laughs> Pure in a puppy chow fan. <laughs> now, these two brothers at the time were paper manufacturers. They manufactured paper for the King of France. So you can imagine what the first few balloons were made out of. <laughs> paper mache. That's right. There's really? Fire involved with the history of ballooning. <laughs> we'll talk about that. These two brothers were out in their backyard burning their trash like they did every week. When the flames, they saw the smoke and the ash rise. I'm sure, you've all been camping before. Crumble up some newspaper, right? Stick it underneath your firewood. Eventually, that newspaper will catch ash and you'll see little flakes of it take off in the flames. Burning some of their excess paper for the week, these two brothers saw little flakes of their paper taken off and they saw this form of lift happening. They thought, cool. We get some larger sheets of paper and drape it over this fire. Eventually, the smoke and the ash will lift it up off the ground, right? Well, Little did they know at the time that it was actually heat or hot air causing this to happen. They thought it was the smoke and the ash. They're French. <laughs> <laughs> but thank goodness they did. They'd get some larger sheets of paper and drape it over this fire, and eventually the smoke and the ash would lift it up off the ground. At the time, they are burning wet and oiled wood, trying to build the smokiest fire that they possibly could. Now, eventually for the fabric, they did start to use women's dresses, which were made out of? Cloth. Silk, there it is. Silk, yes. Silk is the lightest, most durable material they had back in those days. So you can imagine what these things looked like. A bunch of ladies' dresses all sewn together, all lacy and frilly, you know, like a giant nighty flying around in the sky. Attracted a lot of dudes. Now, to get these things uh, inflated, uh, that's proper balloon terminology for you guys. We do not blow up our balloons. Okay, 70 gallons of propane on board. We use the term inflate. <laughs> now, of course, these things were only about 15 feet tall, maybe 20 feet tall. They were considerably smaller than the balloon we were flying in today. They'd get a, a bunch of people together and start flapping the fabric. I don't know if you guys did that back in grade school with the big parachute. Mm -hmm. That same concept. They'd flap the fabric, get it somewhat cold inflated, and then to put the heat to it, they'd walk a bonfire on a pallet and they'd walk it into the balloon. And they'd sit there and hold it <laughs> until the balloon would start to heat up and, and start to rise and they'd slowly pull this fire out. And that's simple enough of an idea. A few hours later, they'd finally get this thing standing up and sure enough, offline it would go. Unmanned and out of control. <laughs> field or two down the way, maybe 100 feet in the air, burst into flames, crash land into that field and set it on fire. I think it was unmanned. That's right. <laughs> Now, you have to imagine what the local people are seeing. We heard some locals this morning honking at us. Probably some people out on their deck in their robes, drinking coffee, watching the balloon fly by their house. They know what's going on. They know what a hot air balloon is. Back in France in 1783, they had no idea what this thing was. So let's say you're, you know, out on your back deck, in your robe, drinking your coffee, or you're working <laughs> on your fields, tending to your horses. Here comes this giant lady's dress, billowing black. <laughs> flies into and over your field, bursts into flames, crash lands into your field, and sets it on fire. What are you gonna think? <laughs> Aliens, a dragon, a demon, the English. You know, who knows what's going on through their heads? So after this, this thing crash lands into their field and sets it on fire. Here come the local farmers, and or landowners with their shovels and pitchforks like an angry mob to uh, kill this demon from hell coming out of the sky. <laughs> that's, what they, that's what they thought. Now that is the reason that these two brothers started to bring along champagne with them. It was to appease the farmers, show them that they were civilized and from the town where the champagne was made. Now we carry on that tradition 
by honoring you, our guests, with champagne. We still do give it to farmers when we land in their fields. Uh, usually a caseload of the stuff and some cash these days. <laughs> you all got had a chance to read that waiver this morning. I just signed it. Did, did you? No. <laughs> <laughs> She's honest, I just signed it. I figured it was something to do that you weren't responsible for you didn't land. Probably just would have scared you into not coming, right? So I just Everybody thought, else signed it. So. In our yeah. waiver, there is a little subsection about trespassing. As balloonists, we are considered to be professional trespassers. Now that goes back to the fact that we can't really steer the balloon. And there are days where Mother Nature is less cooperative than she was this morning. And we actually have to land somewhere where we know we're not supposed to in order to be safe. Well, that's when Mr. Landowner or Mr. Farmer will come out with a shotgun for the sheriff. It's usually the sheriff. <laughs> And the waiver pretty much states at that point you guys are on your own. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta look out for number one, right? <laughs> now, we do have another tradition with our company. <laughs> yeah. As far as the champagne goes. And that is, if you guys can catch the cork in your cup, <laughs> there's a prize. Sweet. You guys ready? What if we catch it in our mouth? Oh. Boy, I could have caught that. <laughs> 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 I might have been caught in it back there. Back there. I got it. Hey! Yay! <laughs> <laughs>